hard to underestimate how much impact that the news has had on journalists and journalism. To say it's the Bible that every single journalist uses, I mean, to understand what the news is about, what they can and can't afford to want. Um, everybody needs that kind of book, and McNeil's is it. I've got my copy of McNeil's, which I had the fifth edition, that goes back to the, uh, I won't say quite how far. But when you think that now we're in the 27th edition, you can see that it's one of those publications that every single journalist in course in the country uses, every single journalist um, will have it in, 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 in the news desk. And on many occasions, the book has been used to challenge uh, magistrates' decisions, to challenge courts uh, in the decisions that they've made, because it is just an incredibly useful record of all the more that you need to know in order to be an effective journalist. McNeys has everything that you could want when it comes to law. I think most of the time we use it for really nitty-gritty getting into the finer detail and making sure that we're absolutely clear where we stand legally on subjects. But it also does a really good job of sort of wider introductions. So if you've got trainee reporters or somebody who's maybe going back into court reporting who hasn't done it for a while, it's perfect for that as well. And it's also very up to date because it's such a high speed, quick moving news agenda and we're all so busy that you sometimes wonder, am I exactly up to date with that? And McNeese is a really good place to go and check that you are or check that you're not and find out what the answer is anyway. So a few weeks ago, I was covering um, quite a high profile bank robbery trial. Um, and the uh, prosecutor applied for a anonymity order. I wanted to challenge the anonymity order um, because uh, I wanted to make sure the court was imposing a, a valid anonymity order. And so I was able to use uh, McNay um, to look at the relevant law so I, I, uh, so I could challenge the anonymity order in court. The managing director of a company accused my HMRC of dodging, I think it was three million in tax off the top of my head. Um, he had been <coughs> found against by the first tier tribunal, uh, taken it on appeal to the upper tribunal at the point where I got wind of the case. And he wanted to stop me from getting access to the case papers. Uh, what ended up happening was we had a, a stand-up hearing in the Royal Courts of Justice. So he turned up, he came down from Birmingham, I came up. Stood there, we set our pieces in front of the judge arguing it out, and I had McNeys there with me. I was referring to it frantically beforehand when I was writing my written submissions for the judge and to prepare my stand-up arguments. And without going through those precedents in McNeys and finding the key things in there that bolted my argument to say, actually, no, 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 we really do need to not let this thing happen. We really need to let me see these papers because it has wider implications for press freedom. Um, as a result, I got the law changed. The law's announced so complex. There's a danger that in place when they have what you call it, the chilling effect. In other words, um, editors and reporters start becoming so worried about what might happen if they publish something that stories in the public interest don't get published at all. So the idea with that is to empower the reporter, to empower news desk and editors to know what they can publish. Without McNeys, it, it's difficult to say where we'd go for our information because it's, it's all in one place. Often, it is just giving us the confidence or clarifying something. So it's kind of, you just always turn to it, it's always there. Mark Canna was a fantastic lecturer um, and uh, I feel privileged actually to have been taught by one of the authors um, of McNeys um, because uh, uh, having him as my lecturer um, gave me, I think, the best possible grounding. Um, in, in media law um, and for my career today. Mark is a really great guy. Uh, he's, he's very approachable, very knowledgeable, uh, absolutely down to earth. Uh, one of the good people in this trade, I think. And he, he really has been very helpful, encouraging to me personally over Twitter, especially, uh, sitting there discussing you know, the, the merits and otherwise of things that might affect press freedom, looking at potential upcoming changes in the law or consultations. And it's really great to have him there you know, just publicly available through Twitter, just to say, you know, oh, here's something I think you might be interesting, or Mark, what do you think about X, Y, and Z? Really, really good guy to have on your side. I think the other value of having Mark in the department is for uh, because he's the person who is at the forefront of knowing what needs to be in the book. He's engaging in social media. He's very much in that world. He's champions his Twitter law board. He knows the syllabus and writes the syllabus, um, and knows it intimately. So our students are getting from the horse as well. They couldn't be a, a better person to have in the department to teach more to journalists.
A's um, does have an impact on my teaching, and my teaching has an impact on the other A's. And clearly, I have other teaching materials um, which I use to keep teaching the way it But um, my A's is, is the central um, text. And so, students tell me they don't understand something, um, having read the A's, then it may be they need to concentrate more, but it may be in the next edition we need to make things clearer. Um, I get reactions from other teachers when I go to other teachers for meetings, what they want in the book, and what they think is no longer relevant. So the book is constantly reviewed, and the student reaction to it, and student understanding of it, uh, is a very important part of that review process. I think having a knowledge of media law is more important than ever before especially in the conditions we're working in in the moment, things like the Cliff Richard judgment being handed down a couple of weeks ago. And I think McNaze is an invaluable resource for that because, as I say, it puts it in plain English. And you really can't underestimate the value that you have on a plain English interpretation of media law that anyone in the newsroom can pick up and use. Good journalism now has never been more important at times of political and economic turmoil um, and international unrest. But knowing what you're doing and being confident that you can report accurately, fairly, and the knowledge of what you're the full knowledge of what you're saying is correct, then I think that's absolutely invaluable. Never been more important.